We live on top of Earth's crust, a thin shell representing less than 1% of the total volume of our planet. Yet, its shape and relief can tell us a lot about the rest of our planet. The crust is composed of igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic rocks that lie on top of a denser mantle composed of peridotite. The crust and mantle are differentiated by their chemical composition. Since we will be talking about mechanical properties of these rocks, Let's look at the distinction based on their response to stress, lithosphere and asthenosphere. The lithosphere is formed by the crust and the uppermost mantle. It is the rigid outer layer of the Earth. The lithosphere is segmented by fall zones into tectonic plates, which float on top of the asthenosphere, the hotter and weaker part of the upper mantle that mechanically decouples the lithosphere from the underlying convecting mantle. The lithosphere can deform in many different ways, depending on the pressure, temperature, loading rate, and minerals involved. The lithosphere may deform elastically, it may fracture during an earthquake, or deform viscously, leaving intricate patterns in the rocks for us to analyze. The asthenosphere, however, deforms exclusively by viscous flow. How do we know all this? It is not an easy task, since we cannot really sample the inside of the Earth. The deepest humans have managed to drill is 12.2 kilometers deep. The Kola borehole only got to 0.2% of the distance to the center of the Earth and made it just to a third of the continental crust that forms the Baltic Shield. We have never managed to drill all the way to the uppermost mantle, much less so all the way down to the asthenosphere. Most of our understanding of the deep structure of the Earth hence relies on remote sensing using seismic, electromagnetic and gravimetric observations. From these measurements, we can infer the presence of discontinuities in rigidity, conductivity and density and make educated guesses about their cause based on geological observations and laboratory measurements. We know the lithosphere can deform both in a brittle and viscous manner because we see examples of these deformation styles in outcrops exhumed from a range of depths. We infer that the asthenosphere deforms by viscous flow because of the high pressures and temperatures occurring at the decoupling depths. When will rocks fracture and when will they flow? Why do earthquakes occur at certain depth intervals? Why do we observe plate tectonics only on Earth and not on other planets in our solar system? To start answering these questions, we need to understand the mechanical properties of the rocks involved, as well as the external factors that may affect them. This module will focus on a particular piece of the puzzle, figuring out the strength of the Earth's lithosphere. It is not straightforward to know the mechanical properties of the lithosphere and asthenosphere as extreme pressures, temperatures, time and length scales are involved.